everyone. We're back with another episode of Plaid. I'm your host, Nakia Driver, and I'm here today with Jillian Lee. Can you believe the semester is nearly over? It seems like it went by so fast. I know, I know. I can't believe there's only a little more than a week left. Yeah, although the semester is ending soon, there are still things to do, like final assignments. Don't remind me. What do we have this week that can make those assignments a little easier? I'm glad you asked. A good way to clear your head is to exercise. Governor State School of Extended Learning is hosting a Team Jaguar Fit Camp on Mondays from 6 to 7 p.m. on the racquetball court. The class will focus on a variety of ways for students to maintain and improve their physical health. You can lose weight, increase endurance, improve flexibility, and gain muscle strength. Plus, delicious and nutritious post-workout smoothies and energy teas will be available for purchase after class. If you're interested, there's only three more sessions left. The final one is on May 20th. It costs $10 at the door per session. For more information, you can contact Michelle Sebasco at 708-235-3983 or at msebasco at govst.edu. If exercising your body isn't your thing, then maybe exercising your mind is. The Student Success Commons is hosting Puzzle Monday and Trivial Thursdays. Each Monday, there will be a new puzzle for the students to complete anytime between 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. to mentally prepare themselves for the upcoming week. Then on Thursdays from 2 to 4 p.m., students will have the chance to test their knowledge with trivia. Whoever can answer, whoever can correctly answer the most questions will receive a care package towards the end of the semester. For more information, contact the Student Success Commons at 708-534-4090. Both of these events are held in the Student Success Commons. So stop on by if you want to put your mind to the test. With the end of the semester approaching, you probably have some final papers to complete, like myself. The Writing Center is available to students looking for guidance and feedback on any writing assignments. They're hosting a workshop today from 6 to 7 p.m. in the Student Success Commons. The workshop is called Organizing Your Writing and is designed to help students shape their writing in a way that is easy for the reader to follow. However, if you cannot attend, the Writing Center is always available to students by appointment and online revision. You can schedule an appointment at mywconline.com or email your paper to gsugrow at glvst.edu. Don't be shy about asking questions about your writing, so you can be sure to finish this semester off strong. Speaking of finishing the semester, don't forget to fill out your SEIs. These student evaluations are the chance to share your opinion on the classes and professors you had this semester. Your opinion is very important and will be kept confidential. They can help improve the classes for you and other students. The SEIs are open from now until May 6th, so be sure to get them done before they close. If you have any questions or problems, you can contact the Office of Institutional Research and Effectiveness at oir at govst.edu. The end of the semester can be str pretty stressful, but there are ways to manage that stress, like hanging out with some exotic animals. This week, our correspondents went out to talk to those involved in the event that happened this past week. On Wednesday, April 24th, GSU held an exotic petting zoo. This event was brought back by popular demand. We asked the assistant director of student activities why they decided to bring back the animals. So last year we brought um, Scales and Tails Zoo as a part of our Spring Fest. And it was a huge response from students. They enjoyed being able to meet and greet the animals. They were on campus. They got a chance to kind of experience nature. I think um, it's pretty much the same environment. Um, I'm noticing that more students are here getting more hands-on experience. We did kind of incorporate a little bit of skeletons this year, I'm noticing. They have fossils over there of different animals and skeletons, so that's definitely different from last year. As students and local GSU civilians enjoyed the animals, the zookeepers kept the animals lively and fun. So we asked, with the amount of animals they brought, how do they keep them so lively and fun? I, I don't think I counted, but uh, I know we have a hedgehog and a little baby pig and armadillo, anteater, owl, sloth. So a lot of little different things. Snakes, of course. Our animals go to so many shows that we feel like it's important that if they're working that they get to do what they'd like to do. That's right. And with the amount of success the exotic animals petting zoo brought yet again this year, there's no doubt that GSU will bring it back for next year. Wow, the exotic animals seem to be a hit with GSU. 
Anyway, the Chicago Southland International Film Festival is hosting its first annual poster design competition. This contest is seeking a variety of designers and artists to create a one-of-a-kind poster to represent the key image for the festival happening September 6th through 8th. The contest is open to all international high school and college students with an eye for design. The winner will receive $100, attend an artist meet and greet during the festival, and receive recognition as the winning artist. The deadline to submit a, des a design is June 1st, so act fast. For more information on the competition, you can visit www.govst.edu slash csiff dash poster. Good luck to those entering. The GST Athletics and Recreation is hiring. Currently, there are positions available for students to work concessions for home and off-campus games in volleyball, soccer, and basketball. The positions are open to all students regardless of your major or year and the pay is up to $10 an hour. There are both federal work study and regular employment options available and the deadline to submit an application is June 28th. If you have any questions, you can contact Dan I'm sorry, Danielle at dwashington13 at student.govst.edu or Ashlyn at aschwantz at student.govst.edu. Make sure you get those applications in. The GSU Division of Arts and Letters is hosting a spring chorale concert on May 8th at 6 p.m. in the Sherman Hall. This event is a chance for the current GSU music students to perform for the GSU community. So stop by to enjoy some musical entertainment and to support your fellow students. For more information, you can contact Mary Wilkerson at mwilkerson at govst.edu or at 708-534-4012. Coming up after this short break, Charles will take some time to fill you in on what's going on in the arts world here at GSU. The Jaguar is fearless. It sees beyond the darkness and moves with silent contemplation. through unknown places with confidence. It knows the path through chaos, shape-shifting through the hidden sun. And when the time comes, it reaches out and conquers Hey there, Twaggers. Have you been to the Manilow Sculpture Park yet? A simple walk outside the Hall of Governors Lounge area and you'll be right there. The views surrounding our sculptures change with the seasons, so it's always a good time to visit. Whether you're from across the street or across the country, a visit to the Manilow Sculpture Park will reward you with insights into distinguished artworks by internationally recognized sculptures as you establish a connection with our landscape. The Manilow Sculpture Park is a collection of 29 masterworks of large-scale sculptures situated within 100 acres of prairie landscape. This Museum in the Prairie is open for public viewing 365 days a year and is free of charge. The park provides programs for adults and children to integrate art and nature. Although it is located on our campus here at Governor State University, it's funded and maintained through grants and donations from businesses and individuals. Some must-see sculptures that I love looking at on campus are the Paul 2006 statue and the House Divided. Let's wrap up this spring semester by visiting this great park with family and friends. Coming up after this short break, we'll meet with this week's special guests. I'm your host, Charles Clayton, and welcome to Here at GSU, the show dedicated to exploring new ways to get involved here at Governor State University. One great way to get involved on campus is through the Physical Therapy Student Association. And here today to talk with us more about that is David Cobb, the Vice President of PTSA. Thanks for being here with us today, David. Thanks for having me. So tell me a little bit more about this association and what are you guys doing, what are you trying to do here on campus? Sure. Uh, so the PTSA, as you said, it's the Physical Therapy Student Association. Um, and it is a graduate-based program, right? 
So what we really try and develop with our association is professional development. And then we've also made a pretty good commitment starting this past year of involving undergraduate students. Um, we reach out to other associations. We do as many fundraisers as we possibly can. Um, we do have dues and fees, just yearly, one-time fees, and then service hours as well to stay in good standing for our club. Well, could you tell me why you think it's important to have an organization like that here on campus? Yes, 100%. Um, so really the point of it is, is again, to get involved. Um, that gives you an opportunity to know the students, to get an idea of the program, to know the professors, um, and really just start developing your professional habits. What are some of the events that PTSA hosts here on campus, and how can students go about getting involved with those events? Yeah, I love it. Um, so just two weeks ago, we had an advocacy, advocacy dinner. Mm -hmm. um, we brought in three speakers from American Physical Therapy Association, and they talked about advocacy and how important it is for our profession. Another very important one, uh, it is our run, walk, and roll for rehab. Um, all of the, it's a 5K. 3.1 miles, All, a good majority of the funds go to the Brain Injury Association. So we're also raising funds for other associations outside of GSU. Oh, all right, well, hey, thank you for being here with us today, David. We really appreciate it, and thank you for this wonderful information. The Physical Therapy Student Association sounds like a great club, so if you want to check out more information, be sure to join their page on Jaguar Connection or contact Megan Boots, Malik Davis, or David Cobb at their student emails. Unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for today. Thank you for tuning in, and make sure to come back to discover something new here at GSU. Welcome back, Flaggers. With us today, we have a special future student abroad who will be studying abroad. I should have said that. Lorenzo Carr, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I'm well. Thanks for asking. So why don't you start off telling us um, what's your major and why you chose it? Um, well, I'm in grad school right now, so I'm in school psych. Uh, I chose that program because originally I wanted to do clinical psychology. In my last semester, I took a class called psychological testing, and the professor for that class, Dr. Fuller, he just was real connected to his profession. He's a school psychologist, and when you see people that are real passionate about something, I feel like it's important to dive into what they're passionate about. and he basically led me that direction, like, you know, I think you'd be wonderful at this. And when you hear that from somebody that's passionate about the field, like, it give you a little boost of confidence. So that's kind of what made me switch over. Plus, I'm excited to work with youth, and I preferably want to work with, like, high school students, get them ready for this part of life, college, and, you know, the real world. Yeah. That's amazing because um, I understand that you have made quite a few accomplishments this semester, um, one of them being a global scholarship. So can you tell us more about that? Um, it's crazy because I went through like a week process of them not going to pick me in my head. Like I would never believe they was going to pick me. So they sent out an email and they just had like little requirements like you've never been outside the country, first generation college student, you in good ec uh, economic educational standard. And you just had to put together an essay about yourself, what you wanted to gain from the experience. And I met with uh, one of the faculty members that are going on the trip, Dr. West, and she was very passionate about it. And I just went around asking people, like, you think they'll pick me? Like, you really <laughs> think they'll pick me? And I, you know, you really try to psych yourself out when you don't believe something's for you. So in my mind, I was looking for any excuse not to write this 800 word essay, like to yeah. not try. And then some just like, you know, just try. So getting that opportunity was mind blowing to me, honestly. It's a tricky thing when you're battling with yourself because that's the biggest thing that stops you from, you know, yeah. being a great individual. So um, with that being said, how did you exactly come across this opportunity? Like I said, it was an email that was shot out and they shot it out like four or five times mm -hmm. uh, from the uh, study abroad department. And they were really looking for applicants. And it stuck me like, why do I keep getting this email? Why do this email particularly like keep standing out? Cause I get like, you know, the GSU view and then like the graduate letter and a lot of that stuff just goes to trash. But <laughs> <laughs> this email in particular just kept sticking out, kept sticking out, kept sticking out. So I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna put this essay together. I'm gonna see what happened. They talking about 
I get the chance to go to Africa, all expenses paid. I'm like, how many lifetime opportunities do you get like that? Yeah. And how mad would I be if I'm the reason why I didn't even have my hat in the running for right. that opportunity? So it, it, it really just goes to show, like, all your professors and everybody usually tells you, like, check your email. Like, really check your email. Right. And that's just fate. I mean, you said you kept, kept seeing it over and yeah. over. So um, what are the requirements for applicants besides uh, writing an essay? Uh, like I said, you had to be a first-generation college student, a good ed educational standing here at GSU, and you had to never have been outside the country before, and I fit all of those. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on your upcoming trip to Ghana. Um, Thank you. So what will the trip um, consist of? Uh, we're going over there. Um, it's very different for me because, like I said, I'm a social school psychology major and I'm going with the social work group. Mm -hmm. So we're going over there, we're working on building like irrigation systems so people in Ghana could get fresh water. That's like 3.8 billion million people over there and then like a very small percentage of that 3.8 million actually have fresh water in their homes. So we're going to help build that and then while we're over there, we're gonna see the uh, the caves where the slaves were held right before they came to America, and you know, just get to learn a lot about the culture, eat some of the food, get to see a lot of things that like I wish I could bring more people to see because it's so many people that don't even believe like I'm really finna go on this trip. Mm -hmm. So I wish I had the opportunity to physically bring them, but I just bring back my experience, my pictures, my artifacts, anything I can just to like give people that experience because I. I still don't believe I'm going, honestly. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned a lot about other people. So I already know that you're going to do great things <laughs> for others. But what do you personally um, feel like you're going to expect most from this trip or what's going to be the greatest outcome for you? Uh, me professionally, I think is just getting outside of my comfort zone mm -hmm. because it's a whole nother culture, a whole nother hemisphere of the world. Yeah. And especially as an African-American male, I think it's very important that we all get a chance to go back home and go see Africa in some capacity physically. And in terms of like my career development, when I get into the field as a school psychologist, I'm gonna work with students from all different backgrounds, from different countries, different continents, and to get a chance to meet and interact with not just people from Ghana, but particularly youth from Ghana, I think that's huge because that experience right there could be the little thing that I needed to make a breakthrough and maybe a transfer student's life from Ghana because I know how to break down that cultural barrier just from this little time that I spent there. Wow, that's just, that's inspiring. So um, besides working with youth in Ghana, do you have anyone um, in specific who you're gonna be working with um, while you're away? Um, like I said, Dr. West and Dr. Kuntz, I look forward to really getting to meet with them in a non GSU capacity because they're, like I said, they're very inspiring women. And I believe that this trip was fate, like you said, especially to go with those two faculty members because they're very, very deep into going for these service learning trips and providing help to these people around the world. And I'm, like I said before, I'm so deep in the meeting passion of people because you find passion from passion. Mm -hmm. And when you're around passionate people, it makes you want to be passionate about something. And I look forward to just gaining some of their insight on life and the field and the profession and what makes them so passionate about these service learning trips. Yeah, for sure. So um, with that being said, what else do you plan to do with your major? Um, at some point down the line, I want to open my own practice and, you know, do counseling and therapy at my own capacity, you know, set my own appointments. But by the time I do that, I would have already had some experience working with youth. So I want to do my doctoral program probably in counseling, like marriage and family, adults. So I would have full spectrum ability to counsel and help all ages. Well, um, that's all the time we have for you here today. I, Thank you. If it was up to me, you know, I'll keep talking and talking because <laughs> what you have to say is um, very inspiring. So uh, thank you for joining us thank today so here in Studio B. And from everyone else in Studio B, we would love to just wish you a safe traveling um, trip and that you just enjoy yourself and continue to do great things. And you all have just been twagged.